there, welcome to the Her Business Podcast, where we dive deep into the stories of women entrepreneurs who are making their mark. I'm Susie Daphnis, I'm the CEO at Her Business, and this week we have a special episode for you because I've interviewed the very talented Susie Moore. That's right, today you are getting a double dose of Susie's, so you know you're in for a treat. Now, Susie Moore is a world-renowned life coach, author, and she's the host of the top-rated Apple podcast, Let It Be Easy. And in this interview with Susie, we're going to be talking about a topic that she knows really, really well, and that is how to get publicity. Lots of it for free. So if you're curious about how to get more publicity for your business, she's a person you definitely want to pay attention to. Because we might all pay for ads or post things on social media, send out lots of emails, build a great website run a great newsletter or great webinars, and so much more in an attempt to get more people buying from us. But what you're going to see today is that we can actually also tap into communities that don't know who we are through the media. But the strategies we're talking about today are not about getting a PR agency to pitch you to the media. This is about you taking the reins and putting yourself forward as the expert that you are to the media that your audience is watching, reading, listening to, or even downloading as might be the case if you got yourself on some awesome podcasts like this one. Now, Susie has grown her own business significantly by using the media, and we're talking big media like Forbes magazine, Oprah magazine, Marie Claire, Sydney Morning Herald, so many recognizable names. And she helps her clients do the same, to get into the right media for their audiences. In fact, we have a free training that Susie has made available for all our listeners, and I'll tell you more about that a little later on and how you can get your copy But in today's episode, we're going to be talking about how getting major publicity, free publicity, transforms Susie's life and how it can do the same for you. And we have so many great bits for you today, like how to tap into a lasting lead source using media, how to lean into your authenticity and represent your business and show up for your audience. And you'll also get a look into how Susie actually does it. So you've got this incredible resource at the end of the show. So grab a cup of tea or coffee or wine. I'm not sure what time it is that you're listening to this. And let's dive into this interview all about publicity with Susie Moore. Hey, Susie. Great to see you. Susie, what joy to be hanging out today. Thank you for having me here. I love a Susie Susie conversation. I don't have them very often, so let's do this. <laughs> Can you uh, share with us how you discovered the power of free media as a tool for business growth? Oh, Susie, I could talk about this for three days, I promise, without even taking a sip of water or a rest. I love, love, love this topic. The media changed my life, figuring out that you can tap into large, engaged audiences that already exist, being able to lean into the credibility and authority of trusted brands like The Today Show, like Business Insider, like Cosmopolitan, like Forbes. It's available to entrepreneurs. And most of us don't know. We don't realize. We think that it's for an elite few. It's for people who are spending through the roof for their placements. When I started Susie as a life coach, a side hustler at that, at the evenings and weekends, I knew that if I had this dream in my heart to go big, which I did early on, there had to be a way. There had to be a way. And I'm not the social media pro like some other people. I didn't want to work out anything complicated, especially Mm. in the beginning. So I thought, you know, how could this be easy? Where are the people? Where are the people? I mean, they are consuming media nonstop. I love Mm. to even just check out media numbers online whenever I can. And you see brands like Business Insider, for example, getting 70 million visits a month. I think to myself, why wouldn't I tap into that? Mm. I don't have to build it. I don't have to grow something from scratch. It already exists. How about I just slide on in? And so one day, Susie, when I was, you know, in my cubicle, I work, I came from the software industry. I started to consume media, not just through the lens of a consumer. So someone who's enjoying content, tips, articles online. I was reading stuff like Mind Body Green, HuffPost, Marie Claire, stuff I still read today. I was looking at it through the lens of a life coach. And I noticed that these big media outlets love to cover topics I love to coach on. Mm-hmm. Stuff like productivity, spirituality, confidence building. And then one day, underthink it is a mantra that I have. I think we think too much, especially high-achieving women. 
<laughs> I submitted just 500 words to a media outlet that just connected with me. And two weeks later, I had an author page, my first media feature. It was shared nearly 4,000 times. And I was like, this is it. It was like my prayers were answered. Mm. And I, I found my way and I've kept going ever since. And it's as simple as showing up, being willing to be visible and sharing your stories, just being real, being natural, being you. The media can't get enough of it. They need content to survive. And most importantly, audiences love it. We show up, we're generous, we add value and the right people, our people find us. It's a real share, not sell mentality that just results in so mm -hmm. many sales. I know that for many small business owners, they think being in the media is something that might happen by miracle, someone's going to find mm. them, or that they have to be paying a publicist $5,000 a month in order to get them some placements. And I know that the work you do is really about getting free media and really being the captain of the ship that gets yes. you into those things. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. One mm. of the um, things that I wanted to say was you say that um, – Free media creates a stream of lasting leads and credibility. Talk to me about the lasting leads because, again, I've seen media where people get in the media but the URL isn't mentioned or, you know, the name of their event isn't mentioned. It's like, dang, I got in there but they didn't promote me, right, which is not their responsibility to do. How do you yes. deal with that? Well, the way that I think about lasting leads is when a media feature is released, you initially get that wave, right? Because it's fresh, it's dropped. You have to ask always to have your links included. Often it's just an innocent mistake. Someone forgets, they don't link to your site, they don't link to your book, they don't link to your landing page. So you just ask. And because we show up in the media for free, in some cases we're paid, but because mm. we're doing it for free, this is the value exchange. It's I'll show up and give advice. I'll show up and create content. One site I love to create content for is news.com.au which is oh, the largest right. site in your market mm. there are so many so many subscribers that i have from just showing up and sharing content adding links and making sure that the links are prominent and clear so of course you get that initial wave once something's released but also what happens susie is the more you're out there the more you put yourself in the way of opportunity, right? Of just being visible. So if I'm creating content right now, for example, around anxiety, 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 and someone, a TV producer is looking for an expert or they're looking for someone to help manage stress or another media outlet is looking for people who can speak to the state of anxiety that we're experiencing right now collectively, I'm just going to be showing up more and more and more than if I were just posting on social media, for example, or posting on my own platforms. Still do that, right? Sh you know, throw everything at your success. But when you're out there speaking on your topic, what you most want to be known for right now, not only do you naturally just have, have people finding your work, landing on you, having, having them discover you because you're tapping into those large audiences, but the more you're out there, referencing your topic and giving and being generous, sharing advice, the more you get what I call your celebrity advantage. You get known for that topic. So if someone thinks of body language or thinks about parenting or sleep or getting out of debt or conversations around uh, sexuality, the more you're out there sharing your, mm. your wisdom, the more findable you are and the more you're the go-to. And content, media content, Susie, it's out there in perpetuity. It's not taken down. Right. It just lives there and it compounds like interest in the stock market, allowing it just to be easier and easier for people to find you, especially when they're putting in keywords, you get better domain authority. You can't buy this, really. Right. This is something that you tap into, you show up, you have a, a strategy, you have your message, and then you allow it to be easy. Like you, I always think to myself, all I have to do is be myself. I have to be willing to be visible. I have to be willing to face rejection. And then after that, the rest isn't up to me. The universe kind of takes care of me. Like it, it, it gets involved in my business and it just boosts me. But the more you're out there, the more willing you are. I've just seen so many blessings come back. So many mm. things I couldn't even have anticipated, Susie. Truly. There's something that you said. Oh, I'm sorry to speak over you. There's something <laughs> that I want to point out, and that is that you are out there, but you are being for a particular reader and you're being about something specific. And so yes. your messaging has to be really, really clear. And so I wanted to mention that. You mentioned that you have to ask. You have to go out there and ask for okay. those links to be in there. Are there other strategies that we're overlooking when we're trying to get in the media? 
Mm. I think the biggest mistake I see is that people don't realize. They just don't know that it's possible. They don't know it's for them. Like you said, uh, people think that some miracle happens. Some fairy godmother arrives and says, you are ready. Like, let's get you out there. It's us. Here's the secret. The media want to hear from the talent directly. That's Mm -hmm. us. Yes, there are publicists and many of them are expensive. No one gives you any guarantees. People can be very disappointed with their investments in publicity. Mm -hmm. But the way that I think about it is editors and producers want to hear from the experts. So if you help women uh, survive menopause, for example, then they want to hear from you. What is it you have to say? What do we need to know about menopause? Why is it trending now? Why is it now an open discussion? What do we need to know? What have we got wrong? They want to hear from you. Right? We, we cut out any intermediary. We get straight to business. And the best thing I think about entrepreneurship is when you're passionate about what it is that you're doing, it just, it's so visible. It's so palpable. And the more you're out there talking about it, the more you're making connections, media creates more and more media. The more people just think of you when it comes to, oh, I need someone to chime in on, or, hey, we're doing this segment or we're doing this roundup. Can we get the voice of someone who who's got something to say on this topic. And yes, social media is a great resource. Yes, all the platforms are good. But naturally, when when anyone is seeking out an expert of any kind, they're not going through pages and pages of Google searches. Mm. They're, show, they're, they're selecting what's ranking first. And that's always going to be the top media outlets. So why not give yourself that huge advantage? I, I can't think of a single reason not to do it. I joke, unless you're in witness protection or or something. <laughs> this is for you. Use it. The media want it. You benefit. They benefit. Most of all, the audience benefits. And if you can share a message or a story that can benefit one person or your social media followers, why stop there? Why not go bigger? Right. E- everyone benefits and the media want to hear from you. I think of it, Susie, as a complete value exchange. It's not like, choose me, mm. you know, please, you know, like me. It's, hey, let's make this work for both of us. And that's where your links, your story, your message are boosted and the media benefit from your wisdom. There's something very powerful about what you said is that we're not going out with the please. (laughs) It's like, (laughs) I have something valuable. You need something valuable for your readers. This is really a partnership. And I think that's a lesson in confidence, in visibility, in making it easy, in following a framework. And I know that inside of your programs, you kind of give people the step by step on how to Mm -hmm. do exactly what we're talking about today. Uh, imagine that with the work you do, you start to get to know journalists and then they are reaching out to you. Would that be right? Oh, yes. And mm. it's interesting because, for example, one of my first editors, she was my Marie Claire editor. Then she went to Martha Stewart. Then she went to Travel and Leisure. Now she's in a, oh, now she's going through an exciting transition that hasn't been announced yet. But I've been featured in all of those places because of that relationship. So whenever you make, and I think there is nothing worth investing in more than relationships with people who can tap into large audiences with you and for you. And they love relying on similar uh, on the same people again and again they, for them to think, oh, mm. I need someone to chime in on this finance conversation or I need someone to chime in on this travel segment. They love coming back to us. They trust us. Those relationships get stronger and stronger. The people you often start out with too, they become more and more senior over time. They refer each other. In the media, I find that often they'll say, oh, my friend at the Tamron Hall show sent sent, uh, me your name or my friend at the Guardian referenced you in relation to this topic. But we have to take that first step. Right. It, and that can be the scary part, the the willingness to be uncomfortable, the willingness to put ourselves out there to go bigger, to maybe have someone not like us. I mean, this is part of the journey. But I think that with all the methods that I've tried, and I love to continue to try all the things, uh, media has paid off the most because it's the most leveraged. The biggest audience is the biggest return in terms of not just sales, but credibility, authority, speaking opportunities, uh, brand deals. The more out there you are, everything stems from people knowing you. They can't hire you otherwise. I love this because, you know, so many of us are spending time, we're developing email lists, we're doing Facebook lives, we might have a blog, we might have a podcast, we're using our own channels, we're posting on our social networks, but here is this whole other world of other people's audiences. And you might get there through strategic alliances or have someone else promote for you, but the media has so many eyeballs, many of whom don't know about us. And that's, I think, um, the 
gem in what Susie is saying is that there's a whole lot of your idol clients out there and they don't know you exist. And becoming more visible is going to take leaning into these channels that are already there. Could you give mm -hmm. us um, a case study or two uh, where business owners, maybe women specifically, if you have those stories, have really had an amazing growth impact on their business from following this strategy of getting into the media? Oh my, so many. I'm, I'm thinking, okay, oh, we have so many. And that, I think that that's one part of it too, Susie. You know, some people think, oh, uh, this is great for just coaches or this is great for just consultants or people with advice-based businesses. We've had people who've got had candle companies, right. hair extensionists, homeopathic treatments for pets. I mean, if you do business with other people, there is a media market for you. Mm. And by the way, you couldn't put a dent in the potential outlets you could reach if you did this every day for the rest of your life. There is so much opportunity. Um, one that comes to mind most recently, because it is a hair extension example, was one of our students started pitching local television, and she just started sharing advice about how to do with hair in the warm seasons. She's uh -huh. based in Seattle. So she got her confidence up. She got her confidence up more and more on local television. And then when she told her story, she wanted to tell her story about how she paid off $100,000 worth of debt in her first year of business in her garage doing hair extensions. Business Insider not just took the piece and featured her, they flew to her in Seattle wow. to showcase what it looks like when someone's creating something from scratch in their garage using their hands. I mean, such a cool story. And then most recently, she was on Tamron Hall, a national morning show in December for a holiday segment about holiday hair. And you think this woman, this woman's pretty new in business, if you were to evaluate it, time spent, right, since, since, since a business launch, getting local television consistently, having a huge brand fly to her to do a segment on her money, how she grew it, and then having a national morning show with a top anchor. This, unlike other methods, I think of business growth, this can happen quickly. Things can grow rapidly. And I think we deserve it. Right. As entrepreneurs, it's hard, right? Mm. We have team stuff. We have tech stuff. There are struggles naturally. Why wouldn't we give ourselves the gift of rapid growth and the authority that the media gives you? Right. I mean, there's a reason we have, we see those media logos everywhere on everyone's mm. site, no matter where uh, any on sign up page registration you see as seen in featured in. We lead with that. And by the way, if you're in the media once, say you're for in, uh, you know, for example, in Forbes once, that's in your bio forever, forever, forevermore. forevermore. Uh, one more example was a uh, a student of ours who who's a runner. He helps people start to run to to. He calls it the slow AF run club. Right? <laughs> so no it. matter who you are, you can start. I need it. But he start. He said to me, "Look, I was doing all the things." Right, posting, blogging. But he said, when I started using the media, everything just changed. He created a piece for the Huffington Post that went viral. It was picked up by the Wall Street Journal. He was then in Lad Bible. He was in an Adidas campaign. He was on the cover of Runner's World. On the and cover? Then, on the cover. He was in Men's oh, Health. Yeah. And then he got a, a book deal. Right, These are the blessings. He got a book deal with Penguin Random House. And then he was on the cover of the New York Times, the cover of The Guardian, and on Good Morning America. So all he did was he shared his story of how he doesn't, in his own words, doesn't look like a traditional runner, but went for it, got started, was brave enough to be himself. And just the echo that that had, how that just mm. completed, like it created this huge snowball effect. You see that what we do doesn't, doesn't exist in isolation, right? There is this ripple. And when we're willing to go a little bigger and more generous in reaching more people to make more of an impact, it's amazing what can come back. It is amazing. And I think that we don't realize when I started, Susie, I just wanted a few more one-on-one -on -one clients. Mm -hmm. That would have been a dream come true. But now it's hundreds, thousands of email leads, uh, du directly going to evergreen webinars, for example, growing my podcast, growing social media, whatever it is. If you want more people in it, the media is, in my experience, definitely the fastest way to get there. I love that story. And I love hearing your personal story. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions around yeah. that in a moment. But here's what I want you to hear if you're listening. The guy who had the running business, the woman with the hair extension, they didn't have these big budgets to throw at their marketing. No. Right, Susie? Mm -hmm. They were small Nothing. businesses. They were small, small businesses, probably smaller than yours as you're listening right now. 
Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I think because I got started, Susie, so early, right, during my side hustling days, I was set up for success really quickly. I felt really confident because I knew this method worked. And, and I thought, if the worst happens, if all my clients dry up, all I have to do is create more content for large outlets. But people are there. I felt it gave me a real sense of peace. And yeah, I got started with, not, I didn't even have a website in the beginning. I had mm. absolutely nothing. But then when I did have a site, I had logos. I had content and I felt like it just really catapulted me ahead. It wasn't a fair thing, right? But it's not about fairness. It's about what, what impact can you make? And, you know, frankly, the way that I think about it too is it's not fair, right? But I don't make the rules. When you're in the media, you're just elevated in the Mm. eyes of if like, what's the difference if you're about to hire a business coach, if you're about to hire a dermatologist, if you're about to purchase a pajama set and one's featured in Oprah and one you can just see their social media right or right. one's featured in Glamour or Elle or the City Morning Herald whatever it may be and one just simply isn't but they have a cool social media we just naturally think that that is more elevated we trust mm. it and it can shorten the buying cycle there are so many benefits so to, which I didn't understand in the beginning but all else being equal if there are two offers being made or two invitations, it doesn't mean that the person with the media is superior. It doesn't make you better at your job. It can't, right? Only your own experience and working on your craft can do that. But in the eyes of the world, you are seen as the, as the superior option. So the best news is anyone can get in on it. And the people who are getting the media, it's not because they're special. It's not because they're better. It's not because they're more experienced or more qualified. They're simply pitching. They're putting themselves in the way of it because they know about all these benefits. Especially the more you do it, you start to realize all the benefits that flow to you as a result. I love it. I love it. I hope everybody's just frothing at the mouth to go, let yes. me have the system. <laughs> Tell me how to do yes. this. Because it's yes. such a wonderful opportunity. You cannot buy that sort of authority. And you're absolutely yeah. right. If we're comparing, you know, this business to this business and they pretty much do the same thing and their price points are about the same, but you mm-hmm. have some logos on your site or on your emails, on your sales page, you are immediately elevated. And I think that's mm-hmm. exactly the point Susie was making. You talked about your business. You talked about going from nothing to now having your podcast. I know you have courses. Courses, you have yeah. things on Evergreen, you have a huge email list. What are the key metrics and numbers? Because this is a business growth summit for women entrepreneurs who want to grow and scale their businesses. What are some of the uh, key metrics or numbers that you prioritize to know that your business is on track, Susie? Oh, great. Well, there's the obvious growth through your own year that we all want to see. Uh, specifically profit. I think that sometimes we overlook that piece. We just look at the top line number. We're very much in the details with what's profitable, what's not. We also love to do an analysis each year based on what product or service, a breakdown of product or service, because sometimes something can take a lot of time and it brings less of a return than you think. And mm-hmm. that's uh, that's okay if you love it. So if you're obsessed with, if, if you have a passion project and you're like, hey, this isn't my most profitable product, but I just, I love it. Good for you. Like do do what feels good. But sometimes I think until we look at the, the actual hard data, we can think, oh, this is really successful, this piece of my business. And it's not, it's maybe 10% or less of your revenue. So mm. overall growth, absolutely managing profit margins, knowing what's bringing in what and then matching your energy so if something's at 50 percent of your revenue Mm -hmm. give it give that 50 percent of your love right focus on the things that are really going to continue to grow things that are scalable so for example i enjoy live events but i to me i don't i don't consider them particularly scalable nor that's not a desire area for me someone else might love that but I, i might have it as a bonus in my mix every so often so analyzing what's really paying off. I also have two other things that we measure. Mm -hmm. Uh, In in relation to, uh, of course, growth, profit, et cetera, I love to measure time away. So I think that if something is, (laughs) you know, if if your profit's increasing and you're spending less time working, that's the win, right? That's really the dream. That's why we focus so much on evergreen and we have so many automations in place. Um, But one other thing, too, that we're really, really conscious of that I've noticed, Susie, very few people either talk about it or are aware of it is the LTV. Right? When someone comes Mm. into your world, how how long until they spend with you typically and how much do they spend over time? Because, of course, we also love ads. We've always got campaigns running. 
we're happy to take a loss on the front end if we're really good at predicting the overall lifetime value of a customer. And I think that most people are scared of that. They don't know how to compute it. And to, unless they get the return immediately, they start to get scared. This is where I think you can be a bigger player. You can take more risks and your world can grow because you balance your budget according to your own forecasting. And LTV for us, we're obsessed with it, monitoring it, tracking it. And it's a really fun conversation to have, but I don't think we're having it enough. Especially I totally agree. I agree because, you know, unless you know, and the LTV is, of course, the lifetime value of a customer, mm -hmm. until you start to dig into your numbers and you know what's actually happening in your business, you don't know how much you want to give Zuckerberg. <laughs> <laughs> or, exactly. Come or on, any <laughs> <laughs> right? You don't know how much yeah. to spend to acquire a client. So what might look expensive, like, oh, I don't want to spend $30 for a lead. Yes, but if you know that that lead is going to be worth because you have got a funnel in place, you've got a system in place, you've got a nurture sequence in place, you've got offers that you're going to make that's going to make that a $3,000 client, then you, like Susie, might say, well, I'm happy to take a hit on the first interaction with that yes. client because I know. But you only know that from having the systems in place. Susie, yes. you've given us a great uh, insight into the things that you measure. Do you have a system or routine or habit around your money and your numbers that is, uh, apart from the annual reviews, do you have other ways that you're diving into the numbers on a more regular basis? We, we, we have my husband and I, cause we work together. We have weekly money meetings. So for us, it's all, it's holistic, right? It's our life. It's all the things that we spend on all the things that we invest in. So we track everything. We spend money. So, uh, people that we pay contractors, ads, et cetera. We see the outflow week to week. We see revenue coming in week to week. We also know what's coming up in the calendar. I think that it's so much easier to be aware of your money than to ignore it. Right? I think that sometimes we're scared, especially if we think, gosh, I've not had a great year or I've not had a great couple of months. It can feel easy to look away, right? Or to go, oh, yeah. I'll look at my money when I have a great uh, a great new client, or I look at my money when something, you know, when an affiliate commission hits or something like that. But we just look at it. And I think it's great to not be too emotional, right? Yeah. I think kind of like, you know, with the LTV, you can get yourself worked up and you can go, oh. you can panic going, I'm losing, I'm, lo I'm losing this month. It's simply not true. I mean, I learned this from another entrepreneurial friend that, do you know the skincare proactive? Uh, you see the you see you see the ads all the time. They're celebrities. It's for acne prone skin. Apparently, proactive really works. Like it really has a great retention. But they lose money for a whole year, for one year. Because once you're a proactive customer, you're a proactive customer because your acne apparently returns if you stop using it. So they'll lose money for a whole year. So just say that you're investing in something and you're not seeing the return now. You can still feel really good emotionally about that. Right. I think that our emotional regulation around money is is important and no one ever teaches us how to look at money and not start thinking our worth is attached. The whole world is coming to an end if there's a bad result or an unwanted result. Uh, you know, how can we look at it as just numbers and then managing our emotions around those numbers? So we're, we're in it. We're in it, Susie. We know like week to week, we check it out. We're, we're on top of it. If something's perceived as even a loss, we look at that and go, is it really? And again, knowing our numbers coming back to forecasts, it makes everything palatable and comfortable and kind of fun do because and, and that frequency is, it means it's very current you're the information you're yes. looking at is you're like you're right on top of it yeah it's i think that money's a bit of a game really isn't it i mean if you think about mm -hmm. it we create it through value we track it i respect money you know but i also i think it's good to, we have to take some risks and we have to invest and to me that's thrilling right because as business owners we get to make these calls and we always want to be calculated in what we do, but I think the more I, the more risks I take, the more I just trust myself, rely mm. rely on myself as a person who creates money versus being attached to any number out on the outside, thinking I can continue to create. That's always available to me. It's pretty fun and it's pretty mm. empowering. And I think that uh, I think that we could be lighter about this, and that's also pretty attractive. I think that's an energy that some people can carry. Absolutely. You know, we can keep our heads in the sand or it's just too scary to look at. And I like the way you yeah. talked about it being a game because I think business is a game and mm -hmm. our numbers are kind of a part of the scoreboard, but so is yes. our time off. So is how many people we're impacting. There's all these other things, but there's so much power and joy, I think, in knowing your numbers, depending yes. on what point of view you take. Yes. Is there uh, an instance where um, 
because you have different products and services, Mm -hmm. there's been something that you've noticed in numbers that has actually had you change what you're doing in business. And let me go back a minute. Sometimes our businesses can kind of get away from us. We introduce new products and services and then we're juggling all these different things and we're not always um, doing the best thing for our business ultimately, but we've invested so much time and love and energy into something that we hold on to it. Has there ever been an instance where a metric has had you say, no more? Yes, I'm thinking all the time, right? I think that again, okay. this is such a dynamic thing. Um, I there was w- one point when I was looking at testing different organic lead generation, right? So I rely on my media and I love it so much. And I think, oh, what else? What can I add to the mix? And again, everyone has different strengths. I think that's why leaning into your strengths is always going to make your life so much easier. But I was testing YouTube for a while and I love it. I have my podcast channel there now, Mm. but I was investing quite a lot of time. I joined a program to maximize it. It just felt too masculine to me how, how that program was run. It didn't feel like it really, I love the, I love the group. I thought they're absolutely the pros, but it wasn't really my, it didn't feel like it fit with me. But I kind of followed the strategies. I was using quite a lot of time to create these videos and I just wasn't really enjoying it, right? Mm -hmm. So I was investing and then there's the the production, there's the energy, there's the time, there's the production, there's the ongoing support. And I just said, nope. (laughs) Like, I, I think that our energy around something, how we relate to it, we can feel and I thought, you know, if I'm investing in this and I, it doesn't feel like fun, the result's not going to be good. The results just won't follow. So I remember just thinking uh, maybe a year ago that that platform is one that I'll have, but it's not. I'm not going to invest any personal energy into it. I repurpose and it grows nicely, but it's not uh, an addition or a lead source or a format that is that's ideal for me, at least right now. All right, we don't need to do all the things, right? And I no. love that you're trusting your intuition and what's working and what's flowing and what feels good to you alongside having, you know, a savvy business brain. You're saying, well, how does this feel? I'm not going to push against my grain just because yes. someone else has got a huge YouTube channel and it's working for them and they're loving all the things. And, I, and it's so easy to be seduced, right? Because, right. And, and, and sometimes too, you know, Susie, I think we, we're so we so readily abandon ourselves by trusting someone who's telling us this is the way, right? And I, we're like, oh, if, you know, I won't mention anyone, but there are some real masculine leaders and some of them are wonderful. Um, Some of them I don't know at all, right? So there's no judgment here, but I'm like, if I did it your way, it would be so inauthentic. No one, I I would hate it. Everyone would, it just, it wouldn't work for me. And I gave myself permission a long time ago to only do what feels good and to f- trust my natural enthusiasm. And fa- I think people aren't stupid. We we know when someone's being real. Like, I think that we know, and I, I respect people too much to go, okay, well, this is how I say it. And this is the technique. And this is the exact, I don't know. You got to have fun with it. You got to try, you got to be yourself because <laughs> that's what we are. Our businesses, they're us. We sometimes think we're not, or we brand them differently, but really it's us that's driving it. So we have to enjoy the ride. Seriously. It's a whole lot of life we're dedicating to this thing called the business. So yeah, yeah. I agree. Our tagline, you probably don't know this, Susie, because um, <clears throat> you're kind of new into our her business world. Yeah. Our tagline is do what you love every day. And wow. so I want to ask, what does a day, an ideal day in your business look like when you are like, I am doing what I love? Oh, oh my gosh. I have to say, I do feel this all the time or like I get a real zing of energy every morning thinking about my life and how we do it. I would say a typical day might be wake up whenever, maybe record some podcasts because I do five minutes a day every day. I drop a podcast every single day. So maybe I'd record say five. So I'd have five in the can. Then I, I mean, do my thing. I I get to interview some pretty incredible people. So I like to do some reading. I always read the books of the guests that I have. And then maybe a meeting or two in the afternoon, but not every day, not on Mondays and Fridays, but I might do an interview. I'm interviewed or I interview somebody else, or I have a call in one of my programs. And that's really it. (laughs) I love it. Yeah, it's simple. Uh, And then I do my content creation, which for me is of course, media podding, uh, I, I write email. I, I write my own sales emails. Uh, but for me, I do that uh, like throughout the day. I, fi- I find that p- process really fun. So overall, I'd say that's pretty much it. 
That's yeah, great. That's more hours. than enough. And I like the waking up whenever. I think that's the key. Waking up whenever oh, is that's the happiness. key. <laughs> that yes, is, that, that is happiness. Yeah, that is like if you had to define it, I think it's no alarm clock. Especially <laughs> us having a corporate career for so long, you know, and morning meetings and so forth. I just kind of, yeah, I think structuring your day the way that you want to have it is the ultimate luxury. Wonderful. Thank you. This has been such a pleasure. Is there anything you'd like to leave us with? Susie, I love being part of this summit. I think that whenever someone joins a community like this, shows up for an event like this, there's an intention that you have and a dream and a desire and your dreams and desires matter. So if you're, if you're called to show up and learn and to go bigger, you're meant to. Like what, what you, what you're desiring, it's also seeking you. So I'm, I'm thrilled to be part of it. Truly, Susie, thank you. I can have this conversation anytime. It's so fun. Thanks for having me. I really love how Susie's story shows us how far we can get when we trust ourselves and our own abilities, when we speak into existence what we want, and when we use a tool that a lot of small business owners are going to ignore because they think they're too small for it. And that's the media. And so I'm really encouraging you to take everything you've learned today to go and do the free course that Susie's giving all our listeners and to take some action. And I want to hear all about it. I want to point out something else that Susie talked about. And she talked about self-worth and finances and sometimes as business owners, how we can link the two and how we can um, think about money being what defines us. And it totally doesn't. But she also talked about the importance of recognizing that as business owners, we can make more money. We just need to get objective about our financial results and really put our CEO hat on and really look at how we interpret the ebbs and flows of finance. And inside her business, we are so big on women becoming empowered financially, becoming financially free, if that is what you want, but being educated on how to look at the numbers and what numbers to look at. And this is something we are training our business owners on all the time. Actually, uh, right now we are gearing up for our money day. It's a bonus training inside the Her Business Network where we work through your finances for the next 12 months so that you can have a better financial year next year. So I'll tell you how you can get that for free in just a moment. Um, But I want to encourage you firstly to check out Susie's podcast, check out her website, which is over at susie-more.com, susie-more.com. I've put all the details, all her contact information and how you can get her free workshop at herbusiness.com forward slash 255. But I want to tell you what's in the workshop. You're going to look at the three major roadblocks between you and amazing PR for your business. You'll look at how to leverage what you already have to get PR from big outlets for your business. She's going to tell you about how she grew her email list by 29,000 people in just nine months purely by leveraging the media and which PR opportunities actually grow your business and which ones don't. So that is all free for you. Thank you so much for listening to the show. And you can get all the details over at herbusiness.com forward slash 255. I would love to know if you put this in place. Just email me. You can email me at podcast at herbusiness.com. If you're a member of the Her Business Network, then go ahead and post something in the group. I would love to hear from you. And if you're listening and you're not part of our network and you want ongoing support, to feel comfortable amping up your visibility, becoming known in your industry, then join us. We support women to become more visible. And we do that inside the Her Business Network. And you can learn more about that by heading over to herbusinessnetwork.com today. Once again, get the show notes from today, including the links to the free course from Susie Moore over at herbusiness.com forward slash 255. Now join us in the next episode for more inspiring stories and lessons from successful female entrepreneurs. I love doing this show for you. I appreciate you listening and sharing the show with your friends. I would love it if you enjoyed this episode to give us a shout out. I'm at Her Business on Instagram and you can find us inside the Apple Store where you can leave a rating or a review. I'll see you next time right here on the Her Business Podcast. Bye for now.